Welcome to part two of the multi-part series discussing the feature functionality of Microchip's new MCP3X6X family of Delta Sigma A to D converters. In this video of the key feature series, we'll discuss the analog input multiplexer and how it can be configured for differential or single-ended operation, as well as channel scanning of the various analog inputs using the scan feature of the ADC. We'll also discuss the internal temperature sensor and explain how temperature measurements can be made to gauge the thermal operating environment of the device. And finally, we'll talk about the burnout current sources and how they can be used to determine open and or short circuit conditions across the differential inputs of the ADC, indicating a faulty or damaged sensor. The first topic of discussion will be regarding the various analog input channels, which can be sampled via two front end input multiplexers. As you see here, one input multiplexer is for the non-inverting or positive ADC input VN+, plus, while the other input multiplexer is for the inverting or negative ADC input VN-. Minus. Since the ADC is designed to perform differential measurements only, single-ended measurements can be made by simply setting the MUX 3.0 bits to A ground, while the MUX 7.4 bits are set to any of the other various input channel options shown here. In addition to the external analog inputs, the ADC also has the ability to perform diagnostic checks on several internal and external ADC resources, such as AVDD and A ground, the 1.2 volt common mode voltage, which is used to bias the delta sigma modulator, as well as the refin plus and refin minus external voltage reference input pins. It should be noted that when the refin plus and refin minus inputs are monitored via the MUX, the ADC will use the same refin plus refin minus inputs as the reference to the ADC. While this may seem counterintuitive, as the output will always saturate, this can be a useful diagnostic mode for determining the gain error of the ADC when using a gain setting of 1 3rd X. The last diagnostic feature we want to highlight is the internal temperature sensor, which is realized using a set of internal diodes, and when biased via an on-chip current source, controlled by the input multiplexer, will provide a measurement of the ambient temperature of the environment surrounding the device. That is, when bias via the on-chip current sources, the two temperature diodes will exhibit a difference in current densities, which yield a voltage directly proportional to the ambient temperature around the device. And finally, the input multiplexer offers the ability to automatically and sequentially scan and convert a user-defined set of analog inputs programmable via the scan register. The priority of conversions for channels enabled for scan mode operation range from the offset measurement being of highest priority and the single-ended channel zero measurement being of lowest priority. Let's take a look at a simplified view of the VN plus and VN minus input structure as related to the temperature sensor of the MCP3X6X devices. Note the current sources configurable via the MUX74 and MUX30 bits to bias the internal P-type and N-type temperature diodes. The P-type diode has a current density four times that of the N-type diode, and the difference in current densities of the two diodes yield a voltage that is a function of the absolute temperature. By simply configuring the MUX 7.4 bits to connect the P-type diode to VN+, and the MUX 3.0 bits to connect the N-type diode to VN-, a difference voltage can be taken and plugged into the equation shown here and solved for the temperature in degree C. The results of this temperature calculation can provide insight into the current operating environment of the ADC, as well as the overall application, and serve as a means of detecting hazardous conditions or determining when it may be necessary for preventative maintenance. And lastly, similar to how the P-type and N-type temp diodes are connected, a set of current acts can also be connected to the VN plus and VN minus inputs for the express purpose of detecting open and or short circuit conditions. These DACs are commonly referred to as burnout current sources and provide a means of sourcing and syncing a known amount of current through a sensor to determine the current state of the sensor and whether or not it can be used for collecting reliable data. Here, we illustrate the use of the burnout current sources for fault detection in sensors such as a remotely connected thermocouple. Since thermocouples are sensors which require no external excitation voltage, such as you would see with a strain gauge, Detection of open and or short circuit conditions is fairly simple, as all it requires is the activation of the burnout current sources on the VN plus and VN minus inputs. In the case of an open circuit, when enabled, the I source DAC will pull the VN plus input to AVDD, and the I sync DAC will pull the VN minus input down to ground. 
Therefore, the voltage seen across the ADC inputs is the full-scale differential input voltage and results in a positive saturated output code of 8,388,607. However, if a short circuit condition were to exist across the VN plus and VN minus inputs, the differential voltage seen across the ADC would effectively become zero and therefore result in an output code of zero as well. As we've shown here, detection of open and or short circuit conditions of floating sensors such as thermocouples can be fairly trivial. However, what happens when the connected sensor is not a floating sensor and requires an excitation voltage for proper operation? A basic example of a sensor which requires an external excitation voltage is that of a strain gauge load cell, which is commonly used in weight scale applications and utilizes a balanced Wheatstone bridge configuration where all resistors are of equal value. For strain gauges, the change in output voltage Vn plus minus Vn minus as a result of tension or strain of the load cell is usually very small, typically in the range of one millivolt per volt of excitation. If we were to apply the burnout current sources to the Vn plus and Vn minus inputs of a healthy bridge for the purpose of diagnostic testing, the resulting differential voltage at the ADC input would still be very small, as the overall contribution to the voltage drop across the R3 and R2 resistors from the I source and I sink current decks would be negligible. However, if the strain gauge were somehow damaged, resulting in an open or short circuit condition, the voltage difference between Vn plus and Vn minus becomes very different. To ensure the viability of a bridge sensor such as a load cell, periodic diagnostic testing can be performed using the burnout current sources shown here as the I source and I sink current decks connected to the Vn plus and Vn minus inputs respectively. The first case we'll explore is an open circuit condition resulting from electrical overstress of the R1 resistor. As a consequence of the open circuit left by the R1 resistor, with the I source stack initially disabled, the Vn plus input is pulled to ground via the R3 resistor. The only voltage and or current present at the non-inverting input in this case would be that of any leakage currents through ESD diodes or other small parasitic currents inherent to the design of the analog input stage. However, if we were then to enable the I source stack at Vn plus, the resulting voltage drop across the R3 resistor would be very small when compared to the additional voltage drop across the R2 resistor from the addition of the I sync stack at Vn minus. The voltage at Vn minus, therefore, remains close to the mid scale point of the bridge excitation voltage. As a result, the differential voltage at the ADC input becomes a large negative value equal to approximately half the bridge excitation voltage, or minus AVDD over two, which would clearly indicate a faulty or damaged load cell. With that, we'll take a look at what happens when more than one resistor is open circuited as a result of electrical overstress. Here, we show the case where both R1 and R3 resistors are open circuit as a result of electrical overstress. In this scenario, the voltage at Vn plus is no longer well defined, as the open circuit left by the R1 and R3 resistors leaves the non-inverting input floating. As a floating input, the voltage at Vn plus could potentially reside at the mid-scale point of the bridge excitation voltage. With Vn minus also sitting at the mid-scale point, the differential voltage between Vn plus and Vn minus could be very small, or close to zero, giving a false indication of a healthy or viable sensor. Therefore, to ensure the ADC inputs at Vn plus and Vn minus are well defined during the diagnostic test, the I source and I sync current acts are again applied to the Vn plus and Vn minus inputs. The addition of I source at Vn plus results in the input being pulled close to AVDD, whereas the addition of I sync to Vn minus again results in little change to the voltage drop across R2, leaving Vn minus close to the mid scale point of the bridge excitation voltage. As a result of Vn plus being pulled to AVDD and Vn minus sitting at the mid scale point, the differential voltage seen at the ADC input becomes a large positive value equal to approximately half the bridge excitation voltage or plus AVDD over two, which again would clearly indicate a faulty or damaged sensor. Now, let's take a moment to recap what we've covered thus far. First, we discussed the input multiplexer and how it can be configured to measure various analog input channels, including not only standard analog inputs, but also various internal and external ADC resources for the purpose of diagnostic testing. 
Secondly, we discuss the internal temperature sensor of the device and how it can be used to determine the thermal operating environment surrounding the ADC. And finally, we discuss the burnout current sources and how they can be used to determine the current state of the sensor circuit and whether it can be used to collect reliable data. In summary, by utilizing these diagnostic features, both internal and external resources of the ADC can be monitored. Monitoring these resources is essential for the purpose of detecting potential issues or changes in an operating environment, which can lead to hazardous conditions and safety critical applications, as well as a means to determine when it may be necessary to perform preventative maintenance. With that, this will conclude our presentation on the analog input multiplexer, temperature sensor, and burnout current sources available on the MCP3X6X family of Delta Sigma 80 d converters. For more information regarding the MCP3X6X family of devices, please go to www.microchip.com, click on the search glass in the top right corner of the home page, enter the part number of the device of interest, and select the device product page, where all collateral, including the device data sheet and any demo and evaluation boards available for the device, will be provided. In closing, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to view this short video regarding the key feature set of Microchip's new MCP3X6X family of Delta Sigma A to D converters. Please be sure to check back with us later for part three of the key feature series, where we'll discuss some of the digital features of the ADC, including the offset and gain calibration functions, as well as the SPI interface, as some of the security features available to ensure the integrity of data retrieval in a less than perfect environment. Thank you and have a nice day.